I, 26, female, was supposed to get married last year, but the wedding never ended up happening because unfortunately my groom made a run for it right before the ceremony was supposed to start and never showed up. My ex fiance Garrett, 23, male, and I had been together for three years before he proposed. We met through friends and got along very well. The first time we met happened to be at a party hosted by one of our common friends. We discovered that we had a lot in common and ended up talking the entire evening, after which he asked me out. I said yes, and we went out on a couple of dates and realized that we really liked each other. Within three months, we were officially in a relationship and everything was going great. Six months in, we had introduced each other to our families and a year later, we moved in together. We were in love and I couldn't imagine anyone better for me than him. I was convinced that he was my soulmate and everything was blissful for three years that we were together. We did have occasional fights, but we would always make up and it would never be too serious, so we had nothing to worry about. Our friends and family constantly commented on how great our relationship was and I believed it because honestly, we probably had the healthiest relationship ever. Any time we had a problem or an issue, we would just talk to each other and sort it out. That's a promise that we had made to each other, that we would always talk things through and never give up on each other. So when he decided to propose over a year ago, I said yes because everybody had their eyes on us, since it was a public event that he had organized for the proposal. But later on, when we were on our own, I decided to talk to him because in spite of the love that we have for each other, I was still three years older than him, and I know it's not a lot, but in our 20s, three years makes a huge difference. When I had met him, he had been 20 and I had been 23, and even I had been kind of skeptical about dating him because he seemed young, almost too young to be with me, and I was worried about what people would say. But he was just so charming and wonderful that I couldn't help but say yes because it just felt like it was meant to be. But marriage was a big deal, and I didn't want him to sign up for something that he wasn't ready for yet just because it was the socially acceptable thing to do. So the night of our engagement, I sat him down and asked him if he was sure about this because I was ready to wait for a couple more years until he was a bit older and had made up his mind about marriage. It could very well be possible that three years later, maybe he wouldn't be on the same page about marriage and I didn't want that to ruin what he had. I was ready to wait for him and I wanted him to know that there was no pressure on him to get married as soon as we could, just because people believed that we had to. But he reassured me that he was ready for it and the only reason that he had proposed to me and asked me to marry him was because he wanted to. There was no pressure on him anyway. So I had spoken to him about this, but in spite of that, he ruined everything that we had. There was a gap of almost eight months between our engagement and our wedding, so he had eight months to tell me that he had been having a second thoughts about the wedding instead of embarrassing me at the altar. But for the entirety of those months, he said nothing and just sat tight with his mouth shut. He pretended to be in love with me the entire time and even in the last week leading up to the wedding, he said nothing and there was literally no way for me to know that he had been having second thoughts and didn't want to get married anymore. It truly was an Academy Award worthy performance. I have to give him that. And maybe somewhere deep down, I also wanted to believe that he wouldn't abandon me or do anything to jeopardize our relationship, which is why I turned a blind eye to a lot of subtle, small things. The science was really small, but I had noticed them. I just convinced myself that it was no big deal and everything would be fine. I also didn't want to seem like a crazy, paranoid person making a big deal out of everything by bringing those things up. 
They were little things like he had stopped waiting for me to finish my meal before he got up from the dinner table, something that he would always do before since I was a slow eater. He also started slowly spending more time on the phone before bedtime, but before the engagement we would always go to bed at the same time and keep our phones aside for some personal quality time. It was just small things like these that made me feel a little weird, but I didn't bring it up with him because I didn't want to come off as paranoid or silly. He was getting married to me. I had the ring on my finger, so small things like these should not have mattered to me. That's what I told myself and convinced myself not to worry about any of these things and let it all slide. But other than that, there were no other signs and I literally could never have predicted that he would have left me at the altar after everything that we had promised to each other. In the week leading up to the wedding, we were still going strong. He constantly kept telling me that he loved me and everything was normal. I couldn't even be bothered to notice small stuff anymore because I was just so excited to be married. But things shifted on the morning of the wedding. We were not supposed to see each other before the ceremony began, so we couldn't talk to each other. But in spite of that, he could have just talked to me the night before and that would have been a lot more respectable than what he actually did. I realized that something was really wrong right before I was supposed to walk down the aisle, but instead of taking me to the venue, my parents and the groomsmen came to my room to tell me that they had scanned the entire hotel, but Garrett was nowhere to be found, and they had even checked the security footage where they had found out that he had actually left in the middle of the night before. I was still trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, and I said that we could wait for a few hours just to see if he would come back, but he didn't. I had a mental breakdown when I realized it, and the next couple of days. That night, he sent me a text message to explain himself. He told me that he wasn't sure if he wanted to do this anymore because he was too young, and he had been thinking about this for quite some time, and he had come to the conclusion that it was just not the right time for him to get married. He felt like he had a lot left to accomplish and achieve in his personal life before he settled down and started thinking about marriage. And I had been right. The discussion that we had on the night of our engagement is actually what made him reconsider what he was doing. But he couldn't talk to me about it later on because I was just so excited and he couldn't break my heart. He kept thinking that he would eventually have a change of heart himself that never happened and he kept waiting for it to get better but he just kept getting more worried and paranoid about the future and so before he made another big mistake he had decided to walk away from the altar and put an end to this because he just couldn't marry me anymore for his own sake and even if he did get married to me it would just be for the sake of saving face and then he would end up resenting me which is not something he wanted to do so he was ending it while we were standing in front of a bunch of people and I was in my wedding dress. Clearly, that was the perfect time to have that discussion. I had so many things that I wanted to say to him after I read that text because I was hurt. I was upset and I was so betrayed, but I chose to stay dignified because I couldn't let my emotions get the better of me. So I only decided to tell him that I accepted his decision and... The only thing that I wanted from him was that he would have to pay for the entire event. And whatever money I had spent on the wedding so far, he would have to reimburse me for it. And that's the only way I would accept it. He agreed to it and that was it. As soon as I pressed send on that text, I literally broke down yet again, crying through the night and it was complete chaos in my life after that. I don't even remember when I stopped crying. It must have been days after the incident. I didn't see him again. He didn't even come back home to collect his things and I still have them in a box somewhere after he had stood me up at the altar. I think my parents, my friends and a few other relatives spent a good few days comforting me while I cried my eyes out. 
They took me back to my house after they had made sure that he wasn't lurking around. When I checked my phone, I realized that he had blocked me everywhere and that just broke my heart even more. My parents stayed with me for a few weeks after the wedding and my friends were kind enough to come and visit me every day. Even his friends, his groomsmen, paid me a few visits just to see how I was doing and told me that they had cut him off entirely as well after the fiasco at the wedding because what he had done was not acceptable. But none of that mattered to me. I just wanted to move on and forget that I had even been involved with him because every time I thought about it, it made my heart hurt and I couldn't take it anymore. So I decided to take a break from everyone and everything and just took off. I went away on a tour of Asian countries for around six months and tried my best to forget about everything. And I have got to say it helped a lot. I know that this is not something that is accessible to everyone, but I am a working woman myself and I have quite a lot of money saved up since I work in the field of investment banking which is quite hectic, but pays really well. Also, my dad is the CEO of his own business, which is quite lucrative, so he helped me out with the funds as well. And after my really long vacation, I came back feeling rejuvenated and like a totally different person. I moved out of my old house and into a smaller studio apartment so I could start afresh and things have been going well so far. I also started therapy because it was quite necessary for me to really heal and recover from my past relationship. And it was quite helpful. Everything was going well until last week when Garrett got back in touch with me to tell me why he did what he did. I had changed my number, but somehow he got a hold of it. It was probably some friend of mine who gave it to him and didn't tell me, which is a gross violation. And once I found out who it was, I'm definitely going to stop talking to them. But coming back to this, Garrett reached out to me and texted me after almost a year since the day of our wedding that never took place. And he sent me a text which said nothing, but it was just a hello and it was from an unknown number. So of course I responded asking who it was. And then he launched into his story and sent me a really long text about how sorry he was and how much he wanted to patch things up with me. He told me that the things he had said before he walked away were all true and he had actually been getting cold feet in the months leading up to the wedding because he felt like everything was happening too fast. And he just wanted some more time. But now, almost a year had passed and he was doing a much better career since he had received a promotion and was in a much better position now. So now he felt he had accomplished something and being married was not the only thing that was going to define him. He told me that he had thought about it for a long time and he had come to the conclusion that he had seriously screwed our relationship up and I didn't deserve it. He told me that he would like to give us a second chance and was ready to get married to me now if I was still willing to accept it and take him back the way he is. It's just a bunch of baloney about how he was sorry and hadn't stopped thinking about me ever since he left. If that was really true, he would have at least tried to contact me once, but he didn't. He kept talking about how he was a different man now, but if that was the case, then he still wouldn't be yapping on about himself and completely ignoring what he had put me through. A year later, after receiving the text, I realized how much progress I had made because that message made me feel nothing but annoyance towards him. Because it was such a pompous and disturbingly insensitive and tone-deaf thing to have said to me. To think that he was even in a position to suggest that he was ready to give us a second chance, was so delusional and lacked awareness on so many levels that I realized what an idiot I had been with. I could have left it at that. I just ignored the message that he sent, but I did something which might have made me the a-hole. So last week, I decided to go out on a date with a co-worker of mine. He was new and had been working with us for only a month, but we had been talking a lot. It felt weird because I wasn't completely over Garrett, but I felt like it was about time that at least 
I tried to move on from him actively. I had healed emotionally and I had come to terms with the fact that he was never going to come back. And even if he did, I was not going to take him back. But still, a teeny tiny part of me still hasn't been able to completely forget him. Which is why I hadn't been out on any dates in the past few months. However, my co-worker and I had been talking for several weeks now and I really liked him. I wouldn't say that I have feelings for him or anything of the sort, but I definitely could see something happening between us. And I wanted to give myself a real chance at a relationship again because Garrett might have broken my heart, but I wasn't going to let that dictate every other relationship of my life. So after a lot of deliberation, I said yes. When he asked me out and I had taken a bunch of photos with him when we went out on our date, it was a really classy and fun date because first we went out to a restaurant and then we went to a bar and got totally drunk and sang karaoke with strangers. I had a picture with him where I was kissing him on the cheek and both of us were pretty drunk in it. It was a cute picture and I knew that if Garrett saw it, he would lose his mind. So I decided to send it to him and then block him. Just for the sake of it, I wanted him to feel bad, which is why I did it. And in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have done that because it just escalated the drama. After that text, I received a call from my parents and they were really concerned because apparently Garrett had shown up at their house and was begging them to let him speak to me because I had blocked him and he didn't know how else to talk to him. He was pretty desperate and I could hear it in my mother's voice that she was very concerned because of the way that he was behaving. I could hear him in the background. He was wailing and acting like a toddler throwing a tantrum. I could hear my dad trying to calm him down with soothing words, but even that wasn't working and he kept insisting that he wanted to talk to me and fix things with me because he was just not going to let me give up on us so easily. I was quite alarmed by the way that he was behaving, which is why I agreed to talk to him. That and also because I didn't want him to bother my parents anymore. Once my mother handed the phone to him, he started screaming at me hysterically and said that I couldn't be with someone else. He was clearly unhinged at that moment and I was even shocked. He insisted that he would rather have me be single than with someone else because he knew that the two of us were meant to be together and he wasn't going to let anybody else come between us. He was talking like a textbook psychopath and so I had to hurriedly explain to him that I had just sent that photo to make him feel bad for what he did and I'm actually still single and not seeing anybody. The guy in the picture was just a friend and we were drunk. He continued to cry for a couple more minutes but then he said he was relieved and he knew that I would never do that to him. I didn't really know what to say because it was really awkward, so I just kept quiet. The truth is, I don't really know if I should classify myself as single or not because I am kind of seeing my co-workers, but he was just acting so crazy that I couldn't bring myself to tell him that I wasn't exactly single. But um, I wasn't exactly taken either. I just wanted him to get out of my parents' house because I was concerned about them. On the phone call, he went on talking about how he knew that he and I were soulmates and that I was going to forgive him for his stupid little mistake and take him back. He then told me that no matter how much time it took, he would make sure that I forgive him and he would wait around for me to come back. Before I could say anything, he apologized for bothering my parents and then handed the phone back to my mother. I explained everything to my parents once he was out of the house and they thought that what I did was pretty out of order because I never know what people are going through and clearly there is something wrong with Garrett. So I never should have sent that photo to him even if what he did to me was wrong. I had no reason to stoop to his level and try to hurt him back and I should have just let it go because it was not worth the drama. They also believe that I need to be honest with Garrett because clearly he is unstable. And there's no telling what he might or might not do any time out that I'm actually seeing somebody. And it happens to be the same guy that he was crying about. That I'm bad and think that in order to prevent another mental breakdown, I should just come clean to him. Because when he finds out that I'm actually seeing somebody and I had lied to him, things are going to be much worse. 
I don't owe it to him, but it's a decent thing to do, and it's also important for me to do right by my co-worker. I want to think that my parents are right, but I also don't know if I want to talk to Garrett again because I have lost feelings for him, and I don't think that he is entitled to know anything about my life, let alone anything about my love life. He is simply not entitled to that information, and his mental health is completely his business. I'm not responsible for it. Just like he was not responsible for mine when he left me at the altar. I'm just feeling very confused about what to do. AITA for sending my ex fiance a picture with the guy that I'm seeing to make him feel jealous when he reached out to me after standing me up at our wedding. Update 1. Hi guys. So after a lot of thinking, I have decided that I'm not going to say anything to Garrett and my parents were wrong. I'm really not bound to tell him anything about my life. If he feels bad about it, then he can just continue to feel bad about it. It's not my problem. He had a psychotic meltdown. I feel bad for him, but that's the most I can give him. My sympathy. I'm not going to give him another chance. I think my parents were only overreacting that day because he went to their house and they were very concerned about what they saw. It's obviously more difficult to not feel bad for somebody when you witness their mental breakdown firsthand. And that kind of explains why my parents were so kind to him because they couldn't help it. We are good people after all. However, let me just reiterate this once again. It is simply not my problem. It's just been one day since I put up my original post. Your response has already been so overwhelming that I have come to the conclusion already and I know what to do. I was just questioning myself for no reason. He was the man who left me at the altar and that should have led to a much bigger mental breakdown than it did. But he didn't look back to check on me and see if I was doing fine. Instead, he actually blocked me everywhere and pretended that I never existed. So why should I do anything different for him? I'm glad that I did what I did. I could have been less petty, but that wouldn't have been as much fun. And anyway, Garrett has a better career by now, so I think he should just focus on that instead of trying to get back with me and doing something that is just not possible anymore. Update 2. So, I told my parents about my decision to not talk to Garrett and keep him blocked. They were a bit resistant at first and said that I shouldn't do that because that would probably lead to another breakdown. He finally found out about my relationship and I told him that was his problem entirely and I was not responsible for it. I explained everything to them calmly and they seemed to understand. They told me that the only reason they were worried was because they didn't want something like that on my conscience because it takes a lot away from a person when they realize that the other is behind somebody else's depression and they are right. But that doesn't mean I'm going to go out of my way to be nice to somebody and think about somebody who literally left me before my wedding and had no qualms about walking away from our relationship. That is not the kind of guy that I care about and I am simply done with Garrett. I want nothing to do with him anymore. Update 3. Hey guys, so it's been two months since Garrett first reached out to me and since then he has tried several times to get back to me. He tried texting me from different numbers, emailing me, but I just ignored all of it. He even started talking to our friends again and begging them to put me in touch with him just like he had done with my parents, but they refused. Nobody had any sympathy to spare for him after what he had done, and I, for one, am glad about it. He also tried to go back to my parents' place, but they nipped it in the bud this time and told him that if he bothered them again, then they would call the cops on him, and that scared him enough to leave. He kept trying to reach me somehow, but I had made myself completely inaccessible to him, so he gave up trying around a week ago. I also learned from a couple of my friends that he had been lying about doing better career-wise and that he had actually started a business of his own, which was flopping really bad. So that explains the breakdown that he had. Clearly, he was finding it very difficult to deal with his own failures and confront them. So he thought that coming back to me would give him a sense of accomplishment or whatever. I don't really know how stupid people think. 
So I don't understand the psychology behind it. But I am guessing that his business feeling is probably one of the reasons why he had that breakdown at my parents' place and was acting so psycho. Anyway, that's none of my business anymore and that's his problem to deal with. My co-worker and I are still seeing each other and for those of you who are asking, yes, he is aware of my past and he asked me out in spite of that. He knew that I had been dumped at my wedding just a year ago and that I hadn't entirely moved on from it, but he still wants to be with me, so we'll just see where this goes. We are taking it slow and steady right now, but I really like him, and I think he likes me too. Some people might say that it's way too soon to tell or be sure of anything, but I took my time with Garrett, and that turned out to be the wrong decision, so if I have learned anything from that experience, it is that time means nothing. If somebody has great energy and you like them, you should just go for it without thinking about what other people might say. Garrett and I are perfect on paper and look how that turned out. So a lot of you guys mentioned that it was too soon for me to actually like somebody because it's just been a year since Garrett and I broke up, but I don't really care. I'm going to go with what my gut says this time and see how it works out. Update four. Hey folks, I can't believe I'm back after almost four years and with such great news. But first things first, in my last update almost four years ago, I mentioned that Garrett had given up trying to contact me. About two years later, when he found out that I was in a relationship with my co-worker, he had another breakdown and he actually showed up at my house in the middle of the night and a drunken scene which woke up all the neighbors and when I tried to tell him to leave, he threw a beer bottle at me, but I dodged it and cursed me out. That was the point where I decided that I had had enough and I called the police, pressed charges against him, and then got a restraining order against him. Haven't seen him or heard from him since then. And I think he moved away with his family a couple of months later. So that was that, and I'm glad to be rid of him, honestly. I'm also glad that he stood me up on my wedding day and walked away from the altar because now I'm married to the guy who is really my soulmate. About a month ago, I got married to my co-worker, but I guess I should call him my husband now. He is everything that I dreamed of, and even though my wedding was much smaller and much more intimate this time around, it was a huge success because the groom didn't run away before the wedding, all jokes aside. I truly got lucky with him, and I hope that we keep making each other laugh and smile throughout the rest of our lives. I couldn't be happier. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.